Over the past two years, households across Canada have been struggling with inflation. Many businesses have been struggling as well, and everyone's been having to tighten their belts to get by. But what about a government? What if the government could actually tighten its belt? We haven't really seen a lot of that. Today we're going to talk with uh, Franco Terrazano. He's the federal director with the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, an organization I used to work with, as well as Chris Sims, who's the Alberta director. So thank you uh, both for joining me today to talk about how governments could tighten their belts and potentially maybe provide taxpayers with a bit of tax relief. Franco, I want to start off with you. Uh, at the federal level, you've done some interesting research recently looking at bonuses at the federal level where people seem to be getting them, but they don't seem to be actually hitting their targets. Could you tell us a little bit about what you found? Well, what we found is a tale of two Canadas. In the private sector, people worried about the price of hamburger meat. People worried about their mortgage payments going through the roof. Businesses taking out lines of credit over the last couple of years just to keep the lights on. Well, that's not the story behind the golden gates of government. No, no, no. We have found more than $1.3 billion in bonuses paid out in the federal government since 2015. During the pandemic, no matter, bonuses. When people in the private sector lost their job or took pay cuts, no matter, bonuses for bureaucrats. When Canadians struggle with a 40-year high inflation, no matter, bonuses for bureaucrats. When departments are failing to meet half of their own performance objectives, you guessed it, still bonuses for bureaucrats. And, and so is that very common when you think about federal employees or is it just are those bonuses more restricted to people that are sort of at the upper echelon of various departments and agencies well government employees are getting it as well but it's most common at the top of the bureaucrat pyramid uh where about 90 percent of government executives are getting a bonuses bonus within the federal government departments you know what else is common uh rewarding failure in government with taxpayer funded bonuses let me explain we see year after year government departments failing to meet half of their own performance targets and these heads of departments are still getting bonuses now in the real world when you fail to meet half of your own objectives you get shown the door not a big fat bonus check but of course we're not talking about the real world we're talking about government that use taxpayers money again to reward failure with big bonuses i think that's unfair and it also means a bigger tax burden for the people who are struggling outside of government now, over a billion dollars in bonuses going back to 2015, I mean, it's it's a big number, but when you look at how much Ottawa spends on an annual basis, it, it's still relatively small, not to dismiss things. But if, if they're going to deliver tax relief, uh, presumably they'd need to be able to find some larger examples of ways that they could reduce spending. What are some of the more big ticket items that you think that Ottawa should curtail in terms of spending right now? Well, the bonuses are just the tip of the iceberg, right? On top of that $1.3 billion in bonuses since 2015, you have 800,000 pay raises over the last three years. You also have the Trudeau government hiring 98,000 bureaucrats since it took power in 28, uh, 2015. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't remember hearing about a bureaucrat shortage in Ottawa before that. Now, the reason I'm sticking on the bureaucracy is because that is where savings need to be found. Because if you look at the government's day-to-day -day spending, the bureaucracy consumes more than half of the federal government's day-to-day -day spending. So what do you got to do? Well, the easy solution is stop giving bonuses to bureaucrats that fail in their one and only objective, like at the Bank of Canada or the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. You got to roll back these pay raises that the government has been given out like participation trophies. And we have to take out some air out of the ballooning bureaucracy here in Ottawa. Chris, quickly, I want to bring you into this discussion. Uh, from a Western Canadian perspective, are there any examples of federal spending that really doesn't sit well with people out West? Oh, yeah, for sure. We hear about it every day here at the Alberta office of the CTF. So things like the CBC, they want to see the CBC defunded, gone. So that'll save us about a billion dollars. They can't stand the unfair gun grab, which is targeting law abiding firearms owners instead of going after criminals. So it's not going to make us safer. It's just going to waste our money. And folks out here in Alberta, not too keen on blowing money on the governor general either. So those are some three very big ticket items that Franco's highlighted many times in the past. They could knock that right off of uh, the ledger and we could save a lot of money. I want to pick up on your, your comments there about the governor general when we come back. We've got to take a break. And we're also going to talk about the provincial level and cities across Canada. What, who's doing 
uh, something positive for taxpayers and who needs to uh, pull up their socks. We'll be back in just a moment.